What could possibly be the most insane plan in history? A German architect had a mind-boggling idea a century ago to literally drain the ocean. Yes, you heard it right. Not a lake, not a river, but the entire ocean. Hermann Sorgel, a name that might not ring a bell, dreamt of a project so colossal, it dwarfs every other engineering marvel we've ever seen or imagined. Now, think about some of the most significant structures in human history. The Pyramids of Giza, an ancient wonder, constructed with stones weighing up to 80 tons each, all hauled and stacked up by sheer human willpower. The Hoover Dam, a modern marvel, holding back the mighty Colorado River, producing enough electricity to power over a million homes. The Panama Canal, a 50-mile-long waterway connecting two oceans, drastically reducing travel times for ships. Each of these is an impressive testament to human ingenuity and determination. But Sorgel's plan, charmingly named Atlantropa, was in a league of its own. This wasn't about building a monument, dam or canal, this was about reshaping the very face of the planet. Something so audacious it would make even the boldest of dreamers pause. He wasn't just planning to drain a small part of the sea. No, he was thinking of draining the Mediterranean, a body of water roughly eight times the size of modern Germany. Imagine the Mediterranean, with its deep blue waters, sandy beaches and bustling coastal cities, transformed into vast expanses of fertile land. Where once there were waves, Sorgel envisioned sprawling fields of crops and networks of bustling towns and cities, an audacious solution to the growing problem of Lebensraum, or living space, that was causing tension across Europe. But why did he want to do it? Could his plan have actually worked? As we delve deeper into the story of Hermann Sorgel and his audacious dream of Atlantropa, we'll try to answer these questions and more. One thing is certain, it was indeed the most insane plan in history. To understand this intriguing story, we need to travel back to the 19th century, when Europeans, particularly in Germany, were discussing Lebensraum. In English, Lebensraum translates to living space. Now the concept itself is quite straightforward. As a country's population increases, so does the demand for more space. It's a simple equation of growth, but its implications were far from simple. This concept of Lebensraum emerged prominently in the 1920s, a time when Europe was experiencing a population boom. The conversation around living space wasn't just idle chatter, it was an essential discourse shaping the worldview of many, including a young Adolf Hitler. Hitler, profoundly influenced by the idea, concluded that as Germany grew in power, it would inevitably need more living space. This belief wasn't unique to Hitler or Germany, it was a shared sentiment across Europe, where populations were skyrocketing and space was becoming a premium commodity. The image was akin to swelling balloons in a cramped room, each country bloating with people, bumping against each other, threatening to burst. The pressure was palpable, and many believed it was only a matter of time before the balloons began to pop, before war broke out over new living space. But it wasn't just about physical space, the increasing populations brought with them expanding energy demands. More people meant more energy requirements, thus making raw materials like coal and oil more essential than ever. All these factors combined created a ticking time bomb. The growing countries needed land and resources, and it seemed their only option was to seize those necessities from each other. The stage was set for conflict. The need for Lebensraum was pushing these nations towards the brink of war, the concept of Lebensraum was more than an idea. It was a force driving the narrative of European history, shaping the ideologies of leaders and pushing nations towards conflict. It seemed like a war over new living space was inevitable in Europe. However, in the 1920s, a German named Hermann Sorgel began to study this problem from a fresh perspective. He concocted one of the most astonishing plans in history known as Atlantropa, Atlantropa, a portmanteau of Atlantic and Europa, was an audacious proposal that was nothing short of revolutionary. Sorgel's plan was to solve the Lebensraum, or living space problem, by quite literally draining the Mediterranean. Yes, you heard that right, draining an entire sea, not a part of it but the entire body of water. The Mediterranean Sea is approximately eight times larger than Germany. 
Sorgal saw this vast expanse not as a natural wonder, but as unused space that could be transformed. His plan was to empty this massive body of water to free up new land for European settlement. This way he believed, he could prevent the imminent war over living space. But how would this work? Sorgal proposed constructing gigantic hydroelectric dams across the Strait of Gibraltar, the Dardanelles, and between Sicily and Tunisia. These dams would harness the power of the falling water to generate electricity, while simultaneously lowering the sea level and revealing new land. Imagine the result. Vast swathes of land reclaimed from the depths and transformed into fertile plains. A beautiful network of towns and cities where people could live in peace without worrying about running out of space. With the Mediterranean out of the way, it would be easier to travel from Europe to Africa, opening up yet more living space. Sorgel's vision was not merely about creating more room, it was about creating a utopian world where the problem of Lebensraum would be a thing of the past, a world where war over living space would be an outdated concept. Sorgel envisioned a peaceful and spacious future, but how feasible was his plan? Interestingly, Sorgel's vision was inspired by a real geological event. The Mediterranean Sea, a colossal body of water that has played a pivotal role in human history, has a fascinating geological quirk. Water from its surface evaporates at a faster rate than the water that flows into it from rivers. This might seem counterintuitive, but it's a testament to the Mediterranean's warm climate and ample sunlight. But why doesn't the Mediterranean Sea dry up? That's where the Atlantic Ocean comes into play. The Atlantic, through the Strait of Gibraltar, continually replenishes the Mediterranean, maintaining its water level. This dynamic equilibrium between the forces of evaporation and influx of water creates a unique balance. Now, let's journey back in time, about 5 million years ago, to a period known as the Mycenaean Salinity Crisis. During this era, tectonic forces caused the Strait of Gibraltar to close off, effectively cutting off the Atlantic's replenishing flow. The Mediterranean, isolated and left to the mercy of the sun's relentless evaporation, began to shrink. The sea's level dropped dramatically, revealing vast expanses of land. This wasn't just a puddle drying in the sun, it was an entire sea, one of the largest on our planet, gradually giving way to sprawling landscapes. This geological event was so significant that it left a profound mark in the Earth's geological record. This ancient event was what sparked Sorgel's imagination. The architect saw the potential of recreating this phenomenon, but this time, under controlled conditions. He envisioned harnessing the same forces that led to the drying up of the Mediterranean millions of years ago. But instead of leaving it to chance, he planned to do it deliberately, systematically and most importantly, peacefully. Sorgal wasn't just dreaming of a new world, he was looking at a chapter from Earth's history and asking, what if we could do that again? But this time, it would be a conscious act of creation, a testament to human ingenuity and the power of vision. With this geological event as his inspiration, Sorgal wanted to recreate it on a grand scale. So, we've delved into the most insane plan in history, but could it have actually been feasible? Let's take a step back and reflect on the audacious plan that was Atlantropa. The brainchild of Hermann Sorgel, Atlantropa was a solution born out of a crisis. The crisis? The concept of Lebensraum, or living space. As the populations in European countries skyrocketed, the need for more space became a pressing concern, with many fearing that it was only a matter of time before war broke out over territory and resources. Enter Sorgel, an architect with an idea that, while seemingly outlandish, promised a peaceful resolution to the problem. His solution? Drain the Mediterranean Sea. By doing so, Sorgel believed that he could not only create new land for European settlement, but also open up easier travel routes between Europe and Africa, thus creating even more living space. This audacious plan was not conjured out of thin air. It was in fact inspired by a real geological event. Five million years ago, tectonic movements closed off the Strait of Gibraltar, leading to the gradual shrinking of the Mediterranean. This historical event, coupled with the fact that water evaporates from the Mediterranean faster than it arrives from rivers, 
gave Sorgal the confidence that his plan could work. But could it have? While the idea of draining an entire sea seems fantastical, it's worth noting that Sorgal was not a fringe scientist, but a respected architect. His idea, while radical, was rooted in a deep understanding of geology and engineering. However, the sheer scale and potential environmental impact of such an undertaking make it highly unlikely that such a project would ever be attempted. While Sorgal's plan might seem outlandish, it surely makes us ponder the lengths to which humans can go when faced with a challenge. His vision of Atlantropa, while rooted in a time of crisis, is a testament to human ingenuity and our capacity to dream big, even when faced with seemingly insurmountable challenges.